Welcome. My name is Hunter Beck, and uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about asset performance management and how new technologies like generative AI are really supercharging it. Uh, a bit like uh, this coffee. They told me that I should talk about my favorite coffee. Um, admittedly, I'm a bit boring. It's just black coffee. So, but that I think we just want to jump right into it and show you a little bit about how uh, data-driven APM is really changing organizations that are adopting it today. And so today is the first in, in a four-part series that we're going to be doing. So we'll, we'll zoom out a little bit and focus on asset performance management as a whole today. But over the next three days, we'll also focus a bit more on field operations, on collaborative planning, and on the asset health topics as well. So definitely join us for those in the future. But before we get into it, I think it's important always to clarify what is asset performance management to Cognite. You know, it's not a new term. It's been around for quite some time. And Cognite's definition of it is really just simply applying the latest and greatest technologies towards solving these three problems. You know, extending the lifetime of the asset, um, looking to reduce the cost and the time of the maintenance, and ultimately improving the, the uptime of the asset or reducing unplanned downtime as an example. And despite the fact that we've been trying to address these problems for such a long time, there's still value uh, left on the table. And that's very clear. You know, when we analyzed with our customers uh, alongside Forrester, they identified numbers on the order of $4.8 million, $9 million worth of uh, untapped potential in, in uh, things like shutdown times or energy efficiency and more. So there's clearly room for improvement still in the asset performance management space. So I think the logical question is, what's stopping us? And if we take, you know, kind of a loose grained uh, view of this, you know, in the major organizations that are trying to tackle these problems are the, you know, the reliability teams trying to set up the right maintenance plans or care plans, the maintenance teams actually executing on those plans. And then of course the operations teams who in some ways are a consumer of all of the, the stuff that happens there and, and really also capturing firsthand knowledge about how the equipment is running on a day-to-day -day basis. And for starters, um, in many cases, the insights that these teams are relying on are super locked down into individual applications or tools that vendors are providing, which makes it very difficult for them to use and is just kind of increasingly becoming more fragmented as you have more and more of these tools. Additionally, uh, as we're trying to take more complex decisions, really fine tuning the last percent or point percent type of uh, um, areas within operations or within maintenance, et cetera, we have to rely on way more data and way more variety of data. And that's just really, really cumbersome and challenging for, for teams to use as you continue to add more. And lastly, uh, the decision-making processes are similarly slowing down and becoming more cumbersome between these different departments as well. So we really haven't fixed that fundamental problem of how do we engage all three of these teams simultaneously in a way that they're really, you know, performing a continuous improvement loop in, in the truest sense. And if we were to really boil it down to, to one point overall is that they don't have simple access to that very complex industrial data that they need to take decisions. So of course, the, the logical question is, so how, how can we solve this, right? And I think there's some simple uh, answers to that on, on the face of it, which is one, we have to improve the collaboration between these organizations. So they need to truly be seamlessly bridging between not only the, the organizational silos, but also the data silos that have kind of formed as we grow all these new tools and, and, and data sources, et cetera. Additionally, um, we can really facilitate, you know, as, as the amount and volume of data and variety of data is growing, if we provide better automated tools on top of that as well, we can provide a lot of intelligent suggestions, if you will, to those groups so that they can take better decisions. So the, the quality is increasing over time. And in fact, the more data you have, the higher quality decisions you can end up taking at the end of the day. And lastly, just dramatically simple and open, and we'll come back to that term a couple of times today, open access to that industrial data. And really, if you solve all of these three things uh, built on top of a truly open industrial digital twin, you're able to not only to do so in a single plant or a single unit within a plant, you're able to do this in a scalable fashion that's really built on a strong foundation so that you can copy and paste and grow these successes throughout your organization uh, over time. And, and that's really exactly what we want to do. We want to go from that manual, cumbersome APM-oriented workflows that, that rely on humans to, to be the bridge between everything to what the world looks like if you get all these things right which is one single data foundation for everything in your APM domain, really supercharged by AI. And we'll come back to some specific examples on exactly how we're doing that, which allows people to not only explore the data they need, 
They're able to collaborate on that data, and then they're able to generate or create an entirely new insights on top of that data that they didn't have before within the organization. And this, this is really what, you know, Cognite Data Fusion was built for. So, you know, we're solving the underlying industrial data problem, but because we focus exclusively on asset intensive industries, we've also recognized that APM problems come up time and time again, and they look extremely similar between organizations. So we've developed APM extensions, if you will, on top of Cognite Data Fusion, which are out of the box uh, value generating uh, capabilities that you can start using today. And we bundle them loosely into three categories here. So we have asset health, collaborative planning, and field operations. And again, just to remind, so those are exactly how we'll, we'll go through in the, in the follow-up sessions in the next few weeks in those three topics in particular. So today, I just wanted to zoom out a little bit and talk a, a bit more on kind of how the overall portfolio is being shaped by some of these latest and greatest technologies as well. And the three themes that this ultimately boils down to are really collaboration, across the organization in those data silos, uh, improving your decision-making processes with intelligent decisions, especially generative AI enabled decision-making. And lastly is really dramatically simplifying and opening up the access to data, not only within your organization, but also to an ecosystem of partners and solutions that can rely on that same data. So we're gonna go through each, each of those uh, today and, and I'll take kind of bounce back and forth here a little bit so that we can see a few practical demonstrations within uh, Cognite Data Fusion and some of those APM, ex APM extensions, exactly how we are uh, hitting on these, these three main topics. So with that, I just wanna start with that collaboration point. And for this, I wanna jump into one of our, our latest and greatest tools, uh, which is Industrial Canvas. Um, so Industrial Canvas, as you can see here uh, with me, is I can get any of the data that's accessible in Cognite Data Fusion and, and bring it instantly into a uh, open workspace that I can start um, uh, working on. So the first thing is here, so I search for an asset 23VG, uh, I pulled in the PNID for that, right? And so within that PNID, we can see we have lots more information I can, I can pull out. I can pull information regarding the asset itself uh, so that I can get things like uh, the, the asset details and the metadata, the functional location code. You can also find related PNIDs that might uh, be relevant to, to the task at hand. But I can also pull things like the operational data as well. So you can see here on this particular tag within the PNID, I can grab the time series from it. And I'm not just pulling a static time series uh, data from this. I'm actually zooming in and I can interact on that live data um, so that I can figure out um, if there might be a problem area, for example, here. And in the spirit of this, you know, I mentioned that the, the topic here is really around collaboration. Um, and with collaboration, that means involving other colleagues, because most important problems within industry today are solved across multiple people and teams. So here I've just tagged my colleague, Kelvin, and asked him if he could take a look at this particular issue. And moreover, uh, if I wanted to, I could also open this up and collaborate even more publicly. So I could actually share this entire canvas publicly with my organization so that more people could be added uh, without me even inviting them. And, 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 you know, for example, just share a URL and, and get them into it. And, and again, I think this is, this is a super um, important topic around collaboration, not just the act of commenting and tagging other users or bringing them into this. But the other thing that's important here is I'm not collaborating on top of sticky notes and a printed out PNID that you, you put up on the whiteboard and a bunch of documents and emails. I'm collaborating in one space. You have a full record of everything that's going on, all the comments, all the history, et cetera. And I'm collaborating on the actual data itself. So I'm collaborating on top of the time series data, on top of the PNIDs, on top of this rich data store, and in fact, improving it over time. So really I'm adding even more context and more information uh, to that digital twin as I go. I think it's a really important point around collaboration because it, it can seem like, well, you know, email is a form of collaboration too, but at the end of the day, it ends up being a bit of a black hole. And the next time you go to solve that exact same problem, you don't have that information anymore. So I think that's a really, really important one here. The next thing though, is I, I just want to open up uh, one of our tools, Cognite in field, which is built for our mobile workers um, out, out in the field, doing routine rounds or maintenance activities. And as they're going through their checklist, um, and, and doing some things, they oftentimes identify problems on, on, you know, out in the field. Here, for example, I, I acknowledge a, a particular issue we just took here in the, in the office, um, but I could upload that, add some information with it, 
um, and, uh, and send that back to Cognite Data Fusion and furthermore onto even SAP uh, with some information on what I think the problem was, which here it was because the, the temperature was too high, um, but also I can add some information on what the asset was or what I think the priority should be on going in and fixing it and even add some information on how I troubleshooted it. You might be asking yourself the que this question that, you know, what does this have to do with, uh, with uh, collaboration? And at the end of the day, the point is here, at the point of interest, at the point when I identified a failure, I logged the information and it became available to the rest of the organization. And that's a critical, critical difference. Because again, uh, in the same way that as we saw in the industrial canvas where I was collaborating in one shared space on top of the real data, um, similarly, uh, here, if I wait five minutes, 10 minutes, or a couple of hours until I get back into the office, I'm looking at my notes that I took that I scribbled down really quickly while I was out and saw the issue initially, and then try to send an email off to somebody, it might be that during that span of time, a critical failure has happened. And, and that's super, you know, one, we're shrinking that time. So if a critical notification came through, it can immediately go to the right people and they could solve it quickly. But also all of this information is now super well structured. So when the reliability engineers are, are going back and looking at modifying the care plan for that asset, et cetera, they're able to, to review all of that old information and observations in a way that, that actually improves their decision-making process as well. So in reality, what we're doing here is bridging the field and the office, which is another one of those kind of critical points in collaboration and, and one we're really focusing a lot in the product on. And with that, I wanted to come to the second and maybe the, one of the more exciting ones, right? Uh, so I know um, uh, generative AI is all the buzz right now uh, for good reason. It has a lot of powerful things that it can do. And we're a full believer in that as well. In fact, you know, the foundation that we built in Cognite Data Fusion uh, with this really robust industrial digital twin below it is, is really supercharging Gen AI to, to answer questions that nobody else in the world can answer. And, and to get into a couple of examples of that. First, if we take a look at that same observation in Infield, now I'm in the office, I'm reviewing some of the information regarding that. But now instead of just going in and clicking and finding the information, I ask Generative AI. I say, hey, what do I do if this sensor is faulty? That one that we saw earlier. And Generative AI digs through all of the documents that I have and says, hey, if the sensor's faulty, this is what I think you should do. But of course, an important thing here is that we need to be able to trust the information that's being provided. So you always give references to the underlying data so that people can verify and, and look up some of the other surrounding data about it as well. And I think that's super, super powerful in that now I'm able to, to answer and accelerate the entire workflow around gener with using generative AI uh, to, to really query and, and build out all of that information. And I think you know, the, the, the clever way of thinking about this or a good analogy for this is like having an intern with photographic memory, going through all of the tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of documents that you have in your organization, and they can remember everything. They're not an expert. They're not, an, you know, they might not be a mechanical engineer or what have you, but they can tell you exactly where you need to go look and find the information. And that in and of itself is a very, very powerful concept uh, and something that we think is going to, to provide a lot of value to those experts who are trying, you know, those technicians out in the field that are actually doing the, the, end, uh, the end work. But it also can be leveraged in much more powerful ways, if we will, as well. So not just searching and summarizing, but here I'm, act, you know, leveraging generative AI in a planning context where planners today have to consider a huge amount of information. So for example, here I've pulled up an isolation plan, you know, again, leveraging generative AI to pull up and find relevant information. But I'm also asking uh, generative AI to, to grab other information or make suggestions around how I might best optimize my schedule, um, which again, is now not just giving me search and summary type of results, but actually providing advice and starting to guide me through the process of pre creating a better plan. And again, coming back to that same point earlier around the fact that uh, these planners and individuals and in operations are having to rely on a huge amount of data now the planner is able to leverage an even larger set of data to take even better and higher quality decisions. And again, that means that they might shave 1% or 2% off the time it takes to complete maintenance, which means you keep chipping away at that backlog much, much, much faster, which is we know a critical problem with an industry, especially with aging assets and, and more. But again, the last topic that we wanted to tackle is just dramatically simple and open access to the data. 
And the reason why we're so keen on this topic is because everything we've seen today are great examples of how an APM can be done in, in a modern setting. But all of it is built on top of this APM digital twin, which at the end of the day is an open and extensible data model within Cognite Data Fusion, cutting across the OT, the IT, and the engineering or ET data. And the reality is that no matter who you are or what vendor, nobody provides all of the answers within the APM space, not Cognite, not nobody. <laughs> and, and that means though, that we need to be able to provide an ecosystem type of approach to asset performance management. So although we provide some really out of the box solutions to solve some specific problems that are really challenging to solve with an industry, we also leverage that open and extensible data model to connect to partners uh, and to third parties or to allow customers to develop their own tools on top of Cognite Data Fusion. So we have partners like Schlumberger who are building incredible solutions, not only in the production optimization space, but also in the predictive maintenance space and more. We have robotics vendors like Boston Dynamics that we connect to to send out into the field in place of humans so we can completely uh, replace the need for repetitive mundane tasks for them. Or partners like Pinnacle who are taking their re deep reliability domain knowledge and embedding it into integrity operating windows that are done live on top of your equipment so you can better act on them. And moreover, we have industry players like SAP who are everywhere and at the end of the day are going to be your system of record for things like work orders. Great, perfect. We write back, we both consume data from SAP, but we also write back data from it to SAP. So that observation we saw earlier in Enfield ends up as a notification within SAP. So at the end of the day, Cognitive Diffusion is really enhancing and embracing both the existing investments that you may have in the APM domain, but also allowing you to pick the best in breed technologies and partners and plugging them on top of really an open uh, platform that allows you to consume and build as you want. And that's really the only way that we believe um, the industry is going to be able to solve the asset performance management problems that we, we talked about earlier. And you don't have to just take our word for it. At the end of the day, we're doing this in practice with our customers. Uh, so Celanese, um, one of the world's leading chemical producers, has a very ambitious target around their, their digital program and really enabling digital factories of the future and, and doing it at scale um, and not not in a small way, but in a rapid way. So they are they are quickly um, going through their entire digital journey, you know, six months to really scale up to 29 sites, uh, showcases the fact that with the latest and greatest technologies, it's not something you need to wait for 10 years so you can roll it out to your enterprise. It's something you can do today. And they're doing this through that contextual foundation, of course, and really focusing in on a few key topics like enabling the digital worker so rolling out infield like you saw earlier to hundreds and even thousands of users in their organization to be able to bring the entire power of cognitive diffusion into the hands of people out in the field and doing their day-to-day -day work, but also providing no code and simpler tools for their organization to leverage, which um, then allows them to solve entirely new problems without having to have a data science background or more. You know, you're enabling those production engineers and reliability engineers to do even more than they were ever able to do uh, before and with even more data and even more context, which is super powerful. Or one of our longest standing customers that we've worked in the asset performance management domain with, uh, Auker BP, who is really transforming their offshore operations completely. And I mean, they've had a massive impact from, uh, from just their digital worker solution deployment alone, somewhere in the $4.6 million range, huge redu reductions in their routine inspection times and their maintenance efficiencies. Um, and, and a lot of that is built off the fact that, again, same song and dance, they're able to provide that entire contextual, easy, simple access to, to that industrial data. But they're able to do so both in a real-time fashion, so they're able to leverage OT data really live, coming to the individuals that may need to take decisions off of it. And again, that's one of the really critical things that separates maybe the consumer industry from the industrial industry. That real-time data is something that's really, really critical to us. And moreover, they're able to leverage things like engineering documents and 3D to optimize the work. So they have spatial awareness for, hey, I'm doing this work order here. A couple meters away, there's another work order that's open. Maybe I can combine those sets of work so that I can tackle both of them at the same time and spend less time traversing from one place to the other on the platform. Uh, or PNIDs to understand and better take decisions on isolation planning or, or turnaround planning. And in summary, I mean, if we really boil it all down, 
first of all, it's clear generative AI is going to really supercharge APM investments uh, and do so in a way that is going to radically change um, how people are operating today, provide them even more information and higher quality decisions. Secondly, you know, collaboration is going to require that you have simple access to that complex industrial data. And you're going to need to be able to do that in a live setting on top of that data, that rich data itself, not in, again, printing off things and emailing and phone calls and more. And lastly, nobody's going to solve the APM problem on its own, on their own. So you need to have that openness and ecosystem oriented concept around APM so that you can really tackle some of the biggest and most difficult problems, not just today, but over time as well. And I think with that, you know, there's a lot more information that we can share. Of course, there's a few links here that you can go to to access um, some customer stories and to check out demonstrations of industrial canvas and some of the other things that we've seen today. And uh, of course, worth remembering that uh, next week we'll have a part two of this series specifically around field operations. We'll be talking about not only how we're enabling the, the field workers themselves to do their jobs and to capture, capture richer information, but also enabling uh, robotics. Uh, so enabling um, mobile robots to actually tackle some of the most routine and mundane tasks in place of humans. Uh, so join us for that next week on September 14th. Until then, enjoy your coffee.